Hey guys, Fred here, AF Math and Engineering. We're going to uh, take a look at how to find the factored moment resistance of a T-beam. This video is specifically going to be um, where the uh, the neutral axis falls within the web. Okay, so um, there's two different sets of equations that you're going to want to use. Um, it's either when the neutral axis is in the flange or when the neutral axis is in the web. So we're going to do the web first and then we'll do another video on the flange so you can see the difference. Okay, so uh, we're asked to find the factored moment resistance of the beam section. Assume the section is properly reinforced. So from the other videos, um, you know what that means now. You know that, you know, uh, the steel has yielded. Okay, so, um, you know, we can make a couple of different assumptions based on this. Okay, so we don't need to find the strain in the steel, which is nice. That's going to make the question easier. Okay, and we're given F prime C, F Y, uh, Phi C, and Phi S. Okay, so the first step to, uh, step uh, that we need to follow, okay, is we're going to need to calculate where the neutral axis is, okay? So uh, we're going to assume that the neutral axis falls in the web, and then we want to confirm that assumption. And based on whether or not the neutral axis is in the web or the flange, we're going to have to use different equations, okay? So first we're going to assume that the... Um, the neutral axis is in the web, okay? And we're going to start exactly like we would a normal beam, okay? So uh, how do we do that? Well, we're going to, uh, you know, equate CR to TR, and then we're going to find solve for A, okay? And if A is larger than the flange, we know that the uh, neutral axis is within the uh, web. So let's go ahead and start with that. So we're going to start with uh, AS, okay? Okay, so we're going to start with AS area of steel, and as you can see, we are given uh, eight 30M bars, okay? A uh, 30M bar has seven, uh, is, has an area of 700 millimeters squared, and we have eight of them, okay? And that is equal to 5,600 millimeters, okay? So there we have our AS, okay? Uh, our effective depth D is given, that's 600 millimeters. All right, and now we need to go ahead and we need to find TR, right? So we need to find the tensional force in the steel. And if we remember from the other, uh, just the regular beam section, this formula is the same. So um, the one thing that we uh, need to note here is that the beam is properly reinforced, okay? So we can make the assumption that FS, okay, is equal to FY, okay? So the yield stress is equal to the stress in the steel. All right, and by doing that, um, we can continue. So and now we need to find TR, okay? TR is the same as previously in other questions that we did. So we have uh, phi S, F, Y, A, S, okay? So therefore, come down here. TR is simply, we're given phi S, okay? F, Y is 400, and A, S is 5,600, okay? And uh, just calculating that out, that gives us a TR value of 9. 1,904 kilonewton. Okay, perfect. So what do we do here? Well, if you'll remember, because we have the, uh, the, the assumption here where we have the knowledge that it's properly reinforced, we can say that TR is equal to CR, okay? So or the sum of the forces of TR and CR are equal to zero because they're equivalent in this case. And uh, since we can uh, make this assumption here, we can also say that because CR is equal to, and uh, this derivation, I think we did this before in the other video too. Okay, so we know that the compressional force is this. So if TR is equal to CR, right, and we're going to assume that alpha 1 in the, for our purposes here is 0 0.8, and um, B here, okay, in this case is the B for the flange, okay, so the B is not for the, uh, and this is 300 millimeters. So uh, yeah, B here is BF, okay? So we're going to take B of the flange, okay? And if we uh, go ahead and substitute TR into here and, so, and rearrange for A, we're going to get the formula, okay? A is equal to TR over alpha one, phi C, F prime C, B, F, B of flange, okay? So let's go ahead and let's substitute our values in. Okay, we're going to put that back into newtons, okay, so 1,904 times 10 to the 3 newton. Okay, alpha 1 in our case is 0 0.8, our phi c is 0 0.65, okay, f prime c is 25 in this question, and our bf, so of our flange, is 1,100. Perfect. And what does that give us for our a value? It gives us 133 millimeters, okay? So what does that mean? So what that means, okay, so this value here is HF. HF is the height of the flange, okay? So that means that the compressional stress block, okay, so the area in, uh, in compression, okay, is greater than the flange, okay? So 
all you need to do is check. So if AF is greater than HF, okay, which is 100 millimeters, okay, you can conclude that the neutral axis is in the web. Okay, so now that uh, we've confirmed the assumption that the neutral axis is in fact in the web somewhere, okay, we're going to need to determine the factored moment resistance using the equations for a T-beam section when the neutral axis is in the web. Okay, so I'm just going to separate this because we're going to continue here. Okay, so now we're going to find MR. All right, so we're, first we need to find the area of the um, the T-beam that is in compression. Okay, so before what we could do is, you know, we could just, uh, with a normal rectangular beam, right, if you had A, you could just find the, the area of compression easily, right? But in this case, because it's a different shape and we're, we're including this, we need to use this formula here, okay? So the area of compression is equal to, okay, phi S, Fy, As over alpha 1, phi C, F prime C, okay? And if we go ahead and fill that in, Okay, we are going to get an uh, area of compression of 146,461 millimeters squared. Okay, so that this whole area here is under compression, and the area of that in millimeters is 146,461. Perfect. Okay, so how do we continue here? So how do we continue here? Well, now I'm going to bring you up here, okay? We're going to come over here. Okay, and we de now what do we need to do? Well, we need to locate the distance from the centroid, okay, from the centroid of the compressional zone, which we're going to call A bar prime, all right? And uh, this is the formula, so it's a little bit long. So this formula is for when the neutral axis is in the web, okay? So don't use it any in any other situation. When you find that A is greater than HF, we use this formula to find a, a bar, and then we're going to use a bar in order to find the factored moment resistance, okay? Okay, so we have uh, AF, area of the flange, okay? We have AW, area of the web under compression, okay? And um, right here we have HF, height of the flange. A, in this case here, is going to be the depth of the compressional stress block, okay? And finally, we have, and that's it. So let's go ahead and let's solve for the variables that we don't have. So let's start with AF, okay? We need the area of the flange. We already found AC, right? The area of compression, okay? Let's find AF. Okay, so AF is simply going to be BF times HF, right? Perfect, easy. So 1100 times 100. Okay. That's going to give us um, 110,000 millimeters squared. Okay. Now, what's left? Well, we need to do we need to solve for a. Okay, so where's a here? A is our depth of a compressional stress block. Now that's just simply going to be the area of the, of the height of the flange. Okay, plus the area under compression minus the area of the flange divided by BW. Okay, BW, and this is the dimension of the, the web here, okay? So that's going to be BW. Okay, and HF is 100 plus AC. Here we have AC, right? That's 146,461 minus AF, which is 11,000. And um, these are actually not so tricky to derive. If you just take a look at the formula, you can usually figure it out. Okay, and if we calculate this out, I'm just going to do, I have it off to the side here because I don't want to waste time. Okay, we're going to get that A is 222 millimeters, okay? And just, you know, follow these steps, follow the steps, um, you know, try and understand them along the way. But, you know, just make sure that you know the steps and uh, eventually it'll make, it'll make sense to you once you do a couple of these. Okay, so finally we need to find what else do, where are we missing here? We're missing the area of the web that's under compression. And that's simply going to be the, demand, the width of the web, okay, times... A, the depth of the stress block, minus HF, okay? So minus the height of the flange, okay? So that's going to be 300 times 222 minus HF, which is 100. And AW, uh, area of the web in compression, is going to be equal to 36,600 millimeters squared. 
Okay. What else do we need to find? Well, we now all we need to do is plug into this formula here. Okay, so let's find our a bar prime. So we're going to have AF. AF here is 110,000. Okay, that's going to be times 100 over 2. We have AW. AW is 36,600. And we are going to multiply that by HF minus plus A, which is 220, minus HF, which is 100 over 2. And that is all divided by the area of compression, which is 146,461. And finally, we should arrive at a value, if we just calculated that all out, our A prime dash, our A prime um, bar is equal to 78 millimeters. Now, finally, we can plug in for our factored moment resistance. Okay, our factored moment resistance for the, the equation for that for a T-beam with the web in the neutral axis, the neutral axis in the web is simply phi s f y a s times a d minus a bar prime and that's going to give us a mo factored moment resistance of 994 kilonewton meters okay. sorry i went a little crooked at the end there i apologize okay so if we have a t-beam like this okay if we cut it here and we take a look at the compressional zone okay is we're going to have a cut like this, okay, the neutral axis, or the, the center of gravity is going to be somewhere here, and the distance from the center of gravity, okay, this distance here to the top is going to be our a, uh, a bar prime, all right, this dimension here is bf, this is hf, this is all in compression, okay, and we have our cg, very good, and this is our aw, Okay, so this is the, if we draw a line there, that's AW, this little area of the web that's in compression. The area of the flange that's in compression is AF. The entire area that is shaded is AC. And that's pretty much it. So that's, oh, and uh, the distance from the top to the bottom of the entire stress block is simply A. So that's, uh, you know, maybe hopefully gives you a little understanding of what these values mean. Thanks for watching, guys. Much appreciated.